In front of me today, I have a very cool test bed. This is an Intel Core i7-980X test bed. I'm using an EVGA classified motherboard. I'm just gonna tip this forward so, so everything falls off. So the cameraman can have a look at this particular setup for you. I'm just using a very basic video card. I'm using some Mushkin uh, CL7 DDR3 1600 RAM. And this is going to be a very short episode because the Core i7-980X is overclocked in much the same way as the original Core i7 that launched over a year ago. The biggest difference with the 980X are two things. First of all, it is manufactured on a smaller process, 32 nanometer versus 45 nanometer, which means that it's much more efficient to build. So they can actually jam more cores in there without producing any more heat and without drawing any more power. Which brings me to my next point. This is a six core processor. The original Nehalem, the 920, 940, 950, 969, 65, and 975 are all four core processors. The 980X is a six core extreme edition processor. It's got an unlocked multiplier. It runs at a stock speed of 3.33 gigahertz. And we are gonna show you in a couple simple steps how to take it up to four gigahertz, even if you're only using the stock cooler. So first of all, let's see how the 980X performs at stock speed. It's a totally default configuration. So. You can see I've got Prime95 running with one thread and I've set it specifically to one CPU. So that means that it is going to be running at, and it changed. You've gotta be kidding me, I just had it. Wait, what happens if I, oh, there it goes. Okay, so it is going to be running at a multiplier of 27X and 3.58 gigahertz. Now, if we set Prime95 to all processors and we run a completely different torture test, so I'm just gonna reopen the program, I'm gonna run 12 threads, you can see that it actually overclocks the CPU only to 3.449 gigahertz. So the stock speed is 3.33 gigahertz, but it actually very rarely runs at that speed. Now, even with the stock cooler in quiet mode, we're actually running at under 60 degrees on all six cores, according to Realtemp GT. So let's see what happens when we actually turn up the heat and we try to get six cores going at four gigahertz without actually spending a lot of work on it at all. Like I said before, if you want a more detailed guide, check out our Core i7 overclocking guide, because this is how to overclock an Extreme Edition processor. Uh, basically, you go into the, I didn't even show you where I went, frequency and voltage control, then you go to the clock ratio, and you increase it. So we're aiming for 4 gigahertz here, and then you go into voltage control, and I'm oversimplifying things a little bit. Obviously, you can tweak things, but I predetermined off camera that we can run 4 gigahertz at about 1.35 volts according to this board. Press F10 and exit. Then we will see you back in Windows. So here we are booted into Windows and that was pretty much it. You can see right here the CPU is running at 3.98 gigahertz, so pretty much 4 gigahertz. And I actually tested it a little bit higher than that. I've had the multiplier up as high as 31 at this voltage and we didn't run into any stability problems. Now I'm going to put my microphone here so you can see that at idle, before it starts to really kick in and work hard, the CPU heatsink is very quiet but you can see that CPU temperatures are starting to creep up into the 70 degrees range. So now you're probably hearing it start to ramp up. Cameraman, can you actually hear that? There we go. So in order to help the heatsink keep things under control, I'm actually gonna switch it over to performance mode. You might actually have to zoom in here and uh, you know, earn your pay. <laughs> Flick it into performance mode, there we go. And you can see it's quite a bit louder now. So this is why people buy aftermarket heat sinks for overclocking. Because as soon as you start to really dial up the frequency, you're gonna see temperatures rise or you're gonna see noise rise with a stock cooler. Now Intel's made a lot of strides with this stock cooler. It's a lot better than anything before, but it's still not the greatest for overclocking. Either way, yeah, it was that simple. The Core i7 Gulf Town. 980X is that easy to overclock. Thank you for watching NCIX Tech Tips and yeah, go, go buy one if you can afford it. They're pretty cool.